Okay, I'm Dr. Stephen Mandel, I'm a physician. As I told you, I also went to graduate school in clinical psychology for four years. Uh, I worked in this community as an anesthesiologist for many years. That's where I really learned to use the art of using ketamine for sedation and for anesthesia. Uh, I had uh, depression and uh, suicidality in my personal life. So, and I continued to be interested in psychology. So when in the late 90s and early 2000s, it turned out that ketamine, the anesthetic, was amazing for lifting depression, relieving the symptoms of PTSD, and uh, actually reversing suicidal thinking. I, I got really excited. And I started doing it really occasionally uh, as I was doing anesthesia. And it worked so well, unbelievably well really not credibly well. I said, I gotta do this. It was just a joy to do. Uh, and anesthesia, you, the optimum thing you do is as though you weren't there. You get people through a transition untouched, and that's your best result. With uh, ketamine infusions for depression or suicidality, people are transformed. You really get to help them to get their lives back. It's a whole other experience. I love it. So I formed Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles, 2014. We're up in Brentwood on Wilshire Boulevard and Barry, right next to Barrington. We provide ketamine infusion therapy to treat depression, suicidality, PTSD, and chronic pain. The majority of our patients are treatment resistant. Many of them are also dual diagnosis. That's our building on the left, our treatment room in the middle, and our reception area on the right. And I show it to you, I'm proud of it, but I want you to see we're really uh, subscribers to the notion that set and setting are very determinative of outcomes. And we create a warm, compassionate, safe place for people to have their treatments. It's not sterile, it's not clinical, it's clean, it's up to all standards, but it doesn't look it, it's not hard edge. So what's ketamine? Ketamine is an anesthetic. It's the most widely used anesthetic in the world. It's been given literally many hundreds of millions of times. It was synthesized in 1962, it was approved by the FDA in 1970, and it was immediately adopted very rapidly worldwide because you can give it with a needle. You don't need a big machine. You don't need to have all kinds of elaborate um, equipment to keep people safe. It has a very, very, very broad uh, therapeutic index. It's safe to give, even in field locations. So you see ketamine being used all over the world. Uh, it's, it's the most used anesthetic. The World Health Organization deems it so important, it's on its list of 50 essential medicines. These are the medicines that the World Health Organization feels every government should make available to its citizens because they're that useful and effective. Uh, ketamine turned out in the late 90s and early 2000s when we started taking care of lots of people coming back from war. Uh, to be amazing at lifting mood, at reversing the symptoms of PTSD, and at reversing suicidal thinking. Uh, so, people were very incredulous initially. Many demonstration studies were done, lots of proof of concept, and we were really on to controlled trials. It works, and it works usually, uh, the average in most studies is 70% of the time. How does it work? Well, I'm not gonna get into all kinds of neurochemistry here, but it works. You know there are four basic neurotransmitters. You know about serotonin, you know about norepinephrine, you know about dopamine, and you know about glutamate or glutamine. Well, most of the SSRIs, SNRIs, uh, uh, the antipsychotics, the mood stabilizers, work with the other transmitters. This works with glutamate. And it works with the NMDA receptors and the AMPA receptors. 
very long and elaborate and fascinating ca cascade of events occurs <coughs> until brain-derived neurotropic factor is elaborated, and it actually causes the growth of dendrites and increased receptor density on those dendrites. It actually plumps up certain areas of the brain. It's quite remarkable. This is actual fact in um, laboratory models. We haven't obviously done this with people, but that's the belief. As far as chronic pain, it actually acts as a reboot or central reset for central brain receptors. So how do ketamine and depression come together? This is what uh, Dr. Thomas Insel had to say when he was director of the National Institute of Mental Health. This is what he wrote in his director's letter. By now, everyone knows that medication development for mental disorders has hit a wall. Pharmaceutical companies have abandoned the search for new medications, and there are no promising new medications on the horizon. So it's important to take a moment to consider ketamine, an anesthetic that has been around for decades. Recent data suggests that ketamine, given intravenously, might be the most important breakthrough in antidepressant treatment in decades. First and most important, several studies demonstrate that ketamine reduces depression within six hours with effects that are equal to or greater than the effects of six weeks of treatment with other antidepressant medications. The shift from six weeks to six hours has already transformed what we could and should expect of antidepressant treatments. Second, ketamine's effects have been noted in people with treatment-resistant depression. Third, it appears that one of the earliest effects of the drug is a profound reduction in suicidal thoughts. Depression and suicidality are very intimately related. About 4% of those afflicted with depression die by suicide every year. Suicide has become the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. And each year, more than 42,000 people die by suicide. 25 times that number, over a million attempt suicide. Actually, two million contemplated every year. Uh, for every, you can see the slide. The rate is highest in middle age. Firearms account for 50% of completed attempts. Unfortunately, firearms are horribly effective at executing people's intentions. People who use tablets or uh, other means have a much better chance of reconsidering their decision. Major depressive disorder affects 7%. About a quarter of 4% of those do die by suicide every year. Now, people who are suicidal have an urgent need of relief. They can't wait the four to six weeks that it's required for conventional medications to work. They're often unable or unwilling to embrace talk therapy. And even if they do, it takes a while to work. Hospitalization's primary contribution is to keep patients safe. It does not actually address the suicidality at all. <coughs> Ketamine treatments are very effective for relieving <coughs> suicidal thoughts. Infusions work quickly, often within hours. Infusions are safe and have zero long-term side effects. Ketamine and addiction. Ketamine is an excellent therapeutic intervention in patients with dual diagnoses. Ketamine facilitates the maintenance of abstinence. Patients in recovery from alcohol, opiates, and other substances of abuse report that their ability to resist or ignore craving is strengthened by ketamine infusions. And the ability to concentrate, to focus, and to get into goal-directed action is enhanced. Satisfaction follows. The ability to restrict cravings and to resist them is strengthened, and the wish to self-medicate abates. Methods and routes of administration. This is very important because ketamine can be given in a myriad of ways. Uh, it's oral, you can give it oral, nasal, intramuscular, respiratory, subcutaneous, and dermal. I'm mentioning all of these so that you know their options. They don't work for what I'm talking about. The only research 
that has demonstrated real effectiveness of ketamine for depression, for suicidality, for addiction, is intravenous. That's why we chose intravenous as our method of administration. It's a pain to do. It's much easier to give somebody a patch or a pill. I'd love to do that. It doesn't work. When it works, I'll switch over in a heartbeat. But right now, we have to go with IV. So what's the big deal about IV? The most important thing in the therapeutic intervention with ketamine as a treatment for mood disorders is the rate at which it's given. You have to get it in the brain at a steady level. By the way, a much a sub-anesthetic level. None of these folks are asleep. Controlling and modulating that level precisely is very important. With intravenous infusion, we use a pump, not a drip. Very carefully calibrated pump. We're able to select a rate and maintain that rate with precision. We can adjust for comfort and we can adjust for efficacy very finely with virtually immediate response because the medication is going directly into the vein, vein, to the heart, to the brain. IV is the only route of administration that enables us to shut the infusion off if there's any kind of problem or discomfort. And it very quickly abates. The concentration decreases to the point where it's not troublesome to people. Intravenous is also the only route of administration which permits the dose to be reproduced exactly from visit to visit, providing a critical continuity of care. These are some testimonials from patients. Uh, they're all genuine. They read like I had the Kool-Aid or something. I didn't. This really is amazing. This is some of the, this is Michael J. Michael is wanting to pay it forward. He pushes for me to show his slide. He had a pistol in his mouth. He took it out of his mouth and used money he had set aside for his final expenses to come and get treatments. That was in August of 16. He hasn't had suicidal ideation since. Michael is not a brand new person. He's still Michael. He still has the issues that Michael had, but he does not have suicidality and his depression has been lifted. These are some of the things that Facebook and Yelp have said about us. <laughs> Ketamine is amazing, but it is a treatment, not a cure. It's not a standalone. It's not a one time only. We need collaborators. We need to partner with people. It's really important. Ketamine will work, but whether it lasts weeks or months or years totally depends on what's done with the benefit. And if you can get into sleep hygiene, if you can get into nutrition, if you can get into good exercise, not working out for the Olympics every quarter, but making exercise a part of your daily life, if you can have a warm, intimate relationship with a peer, if you can start and maintain a relationship with a therapist, Talking therapy is amazing for helping to sustain this. Then you have a shot, not just at a good benefit, but at a sustained benefit for many, many years of your life. We want to empower patients. Ketamine does that. It helps them to lean in and become part of their own efforts for their own wellness. We need to work and we want to work hand in hand with other therapists and other persuasions. We've given you a handout here. I don't know if everyone has one. Please share one if with someone who doesn't. When we work with people, we give them progress reports. We monitor our patients afterwards, literally daily for their mood monitor, and every other week for their PHQ-9. We present this information in a, in a form that you can use with your patients to know where they are. This is what we send to people who are working with our patients after their infusions. The middle sheet is what we do in-house. 
so that we know who to call and who needs a booster and who's still doing well. The back is for people who have actually sent us a number of patients, and this summarizes all the patients of theirs with whom we've had contact and where they are today and where they've been. It's an amazing tool for you who want to follow your patients, who are really pressed for time and you don't know who to call in the 20 minutes before you close the office to make sure they're okay. So that's what we do. I'm told that sometimes speakers suggest questions and I'm gonna suggest a question. Doctor, doctor, if anyone has questions first. If anyone has questions first, okay. Uh, I'm really happy to talk about this. Dialogue is way better than hearing me lecture. Yes. Great, good questions. Um, so ketamine has no adverse long-term side effects, none. Now, ketamine used by people who use it recreationally or who abuse it can have some very adverse side effects if it's used chronically in high doses for years. Ketamine given therapeutically has no adverse long-term side effects at all. Ketamine is great for your uh, bipolar type twos, not so great when they're having a hypomanic or manic episode. Ketamine is fabulous for major depressive disorder, or TRD, as some people call it. Um, it's great for OCD. It's very good for people who are recovering from alcohol, from opiates. We've had less success, but some, with cocaine and, and amphetamine. Uh, but the downers, they really help, not in a physiologic way, they have to be withdrawn and detoxified first, but they are um, really better able to resist cravings. It helps with the pause between the impulse and the execution. Thank you. That was your two minutes, Mark. You have two minutes. Yeah. I have two quick questions. Then what happens? Does any, <laughs> does any insurance help pay for this? Yes. Okay. okay. Increasingly, insurance is paying for this. Kaiser Foundation, you know they are really hidebound and very reluctant to adopt anything new. Kaiser Northern California has six ketamine clinics now. Kaiser Southern California still says it's experimental. Mm -hmm. But I think that's to avoid writing a check. And second question, what exactly is going on during the infusion? And how is that time? Patient, that are, patients are recumbent uh, with a pillow, a blanket, noise-canceling headphones, music. All these things are optional but available and encouraged. And uh, an eye shield like you wear on an airplane to sleep. And um, they are in a an altered state, they're disassociating, but not floridly. If dissociation is a huge spectrum, you know, we all dissociate all the time. You're waiting at the supermarket to pay, you got your hands on the handle of the <coughs> cart, and you think about what you're gonna to do tonight. You're dissociating. At the other extreme, you can be that you don't know who you are or where you are, which end is up. We don't wanna go anywhere near that end. We wanna go a little past the, the uh, food market end. I want to answer your question about monitoring. We monitor full hospital operating group, group operating room grade monitoring in our clinic, literally. However, that's for the first visit. Yeah. If there are no derangements of any of the vital signs, we monitor in a more abbreviated fashion in subsequent visits. Okay. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you.